Hello everybody and welcome to an Elder Scrolls Online video with me, Sherman. Today we're going to be talking about ice staff tanking and how it could be just as efficient. I wouldn't say as 100% efficient, but as effective as tanking with a sword and board. And that's because of the changes that have come down the line for destruction staff. As you guys can, uh, or have seen if you've read the patch notes, or seen my video on the patch notes, uh, I talk about this. But the, the, the staff did get some changes with frost staff. So fully charged frost heavy attacks taunt enemies now. Um, and they also give you a damage shield. And on top of that, while uh, frost staff is equipped, blocking costs magic and stamina, uh, instead of stamina. So you do get those options like you do with sword and board. The same thing here, they also changed the ancient knowledge to put that into factor where frost staff reduces the cost of blocking and also increases the amount of damage you can block so that's kind of a cool thing i've been testing it out for the past few days uh seeing how well it will be now that it's live i've tested it on pts and now that it's live i'm testing it here as well and i can say this that it works pretty good i do not have an ice staff equipped right now um because i do fire tank with this guy but i'm just showing you the like you can tank it with the fire staff too so if you want to. It's all based on the player's preference, but I'll switch to an eye staff here in a second and, and go with that just to show you guys uh, it is possible. So, either way. But with eye staff, you don't need to use as many damage shields um, to mitigate damage. You can actually use the the eye staff itself to block the damage like you can with sword and board. And that's that's kind of the benefit to it. So now that I've got the ice staff equipped, we'll go find another enemy, bigger enemy to face. And we'll be doing a lot more blocking instead of using the um, using the taunt and stuff. Using the taunt from the staff and then using this. So So I'm I do not have any um, food going right now, so as you guys can see. But it, the only thing that really sucks about it is charging that heavy attack because you have to proc the damage shield in order to get the taunt to work. If you do not get the damage shield to proc, it will not taunt the enemy. And that is the, the one major problem with it. So... And it doesn't always seem to hit the target either. It's kind of a weird thing. Like, you have to have them targeted in a certain way. But it, it is an, an effective way to tank just as, as well as you can with Sword and Board. And I think it's going to add uh, more opportunity to players who like to play Magicka-based classes to tank and give them greater uh, ability to tank with the staff versus Sword and Board. Now, Sword and Board is not a bad way to tank. In fact, using any weapon in tanking is good. Um... It's just a matter of whose hands is it in, you know. If the person's a really good tank, they don't need a sword and board to tank. They can tank with anything, and they can mitigate the damage. So trust me, I, I've known a lot of tanks throughout my lifetime, uh, in, in not only this game, but other games that, that tank with a multitude of different things. A lot of times, most of us who did tank in other games, if we had the option, we wouldn't use sword and board. We would actually use other things because it was more efficient to get that greater damage or whatever capable capabilities out of our character. Um, I'm, I'm not here to make fun of the meta either, but I do want to talk a little bit about the meta, guys. <coughs> because one of the things that, that has me really um, kind of mad right now is the fact that everyone assumes that when you play a tank, your job is just to stand there. And it's not. Your job is to, 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 to help the group not only with with t you know mitigating the damage and keeping the the aggro on themselves but also to apply damage i mean it's it's our job just as much as dps just as much as a healer to apply damage too and if your healer is all they're doing is casting spells they're they're not really contributing to grip except for keeping you alive and I when i play a healer or a tank or anything i try to do a little bit of everything i try to do a little bit of support i try to do a little bit of you know damage and everything else so it it makes the run a lot smoother, in my opinion, when you're tanking and you're not just standing there going like this. I mean, I see this a lot in dungeons. Where tanks just do this. And, and that's it. They don't do anything else. They, they're just doing this all the time. And then they'll do this every once in a while. They'll, they'll, they'll charge a heavy attack to get their resources built back up. And then it's right back into block mode. And they stay there and block. 
And uh, if you're standing there spending most of your time blocking, while having damage shield up, just to show you guys what, what it's like. You still have the damage shield and you're standing there blocking. You're really not doing any good for your group by doing so. So it's, it's, it's a little bit better if you get some damage in there as well. Because your damage shield can mitigate that damage for you for the most part while you're doing damage. And that's, that's the thing about the meta tanking that I don't like. Is the fact that a lot of times they tell you that your character is better off doing support and 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 healing than they are at doing damage. If I wanted to, and honestly, if I wanted to do that, I would make a heal tank. If I wanted to support my group with heals, besides tanking, you know, um, and and that's the the greatest thing about Elder Scrolls is Elder Scrolls offers you the opportunity to make a character very unique to your own play style. I mean, I know a lot of people who would love to play, a, a t you know, a tank, but they love to play casters. But they can't because most of the time the meta won't allow it. The meta doesn't allow you to do certain things. It's like, the, it's like right now, you know, the heavy DPS build right now is the Magicka or the Sork, uh, the Stamina Sork is like the high top DPS right now. And everyone's playing it because of that. And then the people are, are, are incorporating that same build structure into other things like the, the, the DK, the, you know, like they're, they're just using the same concept with this pretty much the same build structure and using it for every class combination. The same thing goes with tanks. If you look at every tank out there, they're all running the same gear. They're all using the same abilities mostly as the, uh, you know, whatever the class has to offer, but they're pretty much all playing the same. I mean, it doesn't seem like it'd be very enjoyable to do that. Just my opinion. But I do think that, that, that the ice staff tanking thing would, will become a viable thing. And it's probably going to become more prevalent in, in the near future. Wh especially when Warden comes out and we have the ice abilities from the Warden. And those abilities allow us greater ice defense magic. And, you know, possibly some damage abilities on top of it. But it will make the ice staff very viable then especially with the fact that you'll have a pet that can also tank with you um i see a lot of things coming down the road and a lot of changes especially uh when it comes to meta right now there's a lot of people looking into the meta on making sword and board and ice tank a thing a and hey if you want to do that that's cool that's I'm, I'm all for it but just remember that when you do change your build up and stuff you're 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 the only difference between now and what you did before is you have an ice staff. And, you, and you're using a, a sword and shield. And you're using an ice staff mainly to block. So you have two resource pools that you're going to be pulling from when you block. And, and that's pretty much what, what they're doing. That's all they're doing. And, I mean, I think it's a good idea because, I mean, if a tank can mitigate damage and do damage at the same time, I think it's a lot better. I mean, this is an action-based game, and it does apply, you know, those, that, that damage factor to the total group's damage, not just the individual. And if your tank can do decent damage, I say do it. But that's just my opinion, and my opinion doesn't amount to anything because I'm one person out of millions playing the game. Just like the people giving out the build suggestions. They're one person out of millions playing the game. Not everyone's going to play the same, guys. And that's pretty much what I'm, I'm trying to say is not everyone plays the same. And, and when you see that, everyone's trying something new. A lot of people are going to be trying this, the, the ice staff out. I, I, I can almost guarantee it. Uh, because it does offer a lot more flexibility to your character. It offers a lot more freedom and and stuff to your character because now you're not just like everyone else you're actually playing something different something unique to your own play style kind of thing and i think that magic of tanking is is a very 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 viable tanking setup especially the fact that most damage shields except for two in the whole entire game uh that are built off of health the rest of them are all based off of magic and and i mean unless you're talking about the uh You know the the 
the damage shield from sword and board which is based on stamina but still most of the damage shields are fully based on either max health or on magicka and because of that it seems a lot better to go with a magicka build that using an ice staff or yeah or an ice staff or a, a staff in general when tanking with the staff but this is just like i said it's all based on my opinion my thoughts and everything and everyone does play differently now, I don't, like I said, I don't have a problem with the meta. I think that, that the meta ideas are good, but I don't think that every build works for every player. I think that some people, you know, like to have their own unique, you know, uh, flair on something. And, and it's fine to do that, guys. It's, it's in fact, I, I say I encourage it. I would encourage people to do that, to play outside the box. Find something that fits for you. Work with, that works for you and does what you want it to do. <coughs> I mean, I still see people run in some builds that are back dated to when the game launched. And they're, they're really effective. Because they've played it for so long or something that they know it inside and out. And they know what they can, like, how much more they can push it. And that's the other thing. Like, the more you can push your character to, to do more than just one roll at a time. You know, like, if you're playing a tank, yes, your job is to mitigate damage. That's, that's your job. But it, it shouldn't stop you from pushing the, the boundaries of what your character can do outside of that. Because I'll tell you one thing, I've played a meta tank, and going out in the open world like this, you're not going to be doing near the damage that you should be, or could be doing, to survive in this kind of environment. I mean, you can mitigate all the damage you take, but trying to kill something is going to take you a really, really, really long time, because your character just doesn't have the damage potential that, you know, DPS does. But you could. You could have half the potential of what they have. And it's just a matter of just putting it together, making it work for you. Like I said, I made this character to to strictly be a, a tank. And when I got to a certain level, I decided to try flame tank and fire tanking. And it works out pretty good for the most part. I was using two different fire sets there for a while. And I switched out from them and went for a more magic based set. Because I figured that would be better for fire tank. I mean, I am going to be changing this guy into a stamina tank eventually, and probably almost 100% stamina tank, uh, minus the couple abilities from his class that is going to give him, that is going to be based on Magicka, but the rest of it is going to be 100% stamina, and it's just, for me, it works better. So, but yeah, I, I, I did want to talk about ice staff tanking, and I do think it's viable. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about the meta. I already talked about it. So that's it, guys. Um, I do have a lot more videos coming out. I'm going to be bringing some build videos forward, but they're going to be more casual, friendly builds than they are hardcore, you know, uh, dungeon trial builds. They will be viable for them if you don't mind taking your time. I mean, honestly, a lot of the meta build stuff is, is for people who want to clear the, the stuff in, like, minutes versus, you know, like, or not minutes, but I should say, like, clearing a thing in, like, 20 minutes versus, like, 30 minutes or 40 minutes. I mean, the average trial takes about 30 minutes to complete normal. And if you're speedrunning it, yeah, you can get it done in 20 minutes. But if you're just running the trial to get to do it, you can do it in 30 minutes or less. The same thing with most dungeons. Most dungeons only take, on average, 30 minutes. I mean, I can solo most dungeons in 30 minutes by myself, so... On normal mode and th that mode's not really that much harder and hard mode is just the final boss is hard so that you there's a lot of playroom there but yeah a lot of dungeons aren't that hard and so I'm gonna be bringing builds forward that are gonna be more dungeon based and not trial based but they could be used in trials with some altering to them um, and based on the players choice so but that's it for now, guys. Um, I am going to be going over my flame tank build here in the next couple of days. Probably uh, bring that video out tomorrow. This is uh, coming out on third Tuesday. Then, yeah, Wednesday, I'll probably do my flame tank video, show you guys my idea with it, um, what I'm trying to do with it and stuff, and, and, and how it will affect the player playing it uh, if set up right or done right. So, and, and it, this, like I said, I'm not telling you how to play. This is just my build that I use personally. If you don't like it, you don't have to play it. So, 
But if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and slap that like button. It would be greatly appreciated. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can hit that subscribe button and be subscribed to me. So whenever I post a video, you guys can be, you know, see when I do and watch it. Other than that, that's it. Until next time, have a wonderful day, and I will see you all later.